Welcome to Easy Anatomy. Uh, I would like to talk to you today uh, about the blood supply, blood supply of lower limb. Okay, I will go back uh, to the abdominal aorta. Here is the abdominal aorta where it is split into two common iliac arteries and then each common iliac artery is split into internal and external iliac artery internal and external iliac artery as you see external iliac artery sound to be the continuation of the common iliac so this is abdominal aorta this is left common iliac artery right common iliac artery left external iliac right external iliac and these two are the internal iliac arteries internal iliac arteries okay so external iliac artery is going to contain in the lower extremity as femoral artery as femoral artery behind the inguinal ligament so this is the inguinal ligament okay inguinal ligament and this is the femoral artery the same on the other side extend behind inguinal ligament to continue in the lower extremity as femoral artery okay the femoral artery is the main arterial supply of the lower extremity but still internal iliac artery on each side is going to give several branches which extend to the lower extremity among those branches are obturator which is traveling through obturator foramen then you have superior and inferior gluteal arteries superior and inferior gluteal arteries so internal iliac artery is going to send three branches obturator superior so inferior gluteal artery and superior gluteal artery so at the end of the day the source of blood supply source of blood supply to lower limb is two sources external iliac and this is major one internal iliac and this is minor contribution to blood supply of lower extremity how external iliac is the major because this is the one which you give femoral artery and we'll discuss it today then the minor branches coming from internal iliac are obturator to the medial side of the thigh to superior gluteal three inferior gluteal okay so this is the beginning let us start talking about the primary source of blood supply of the lower extremity which is femoral artery which is femoral okay femoral artery We know the beginning now. The beginning is a continuation of 
external iliac. Here is the external iliac. Contain into the thigh as femoral artery. External iliac artery. Here is the femoral. And this is inguinal ligament. Keep in mind that the femoral artery cross the femoral triangle from the base to the apex. If you remember, if this is lateral and this is medial side, remember that we have on the medial side adductor longus and extending from here is sartorius. So you have adductor longus muscle and you have then sartorius and those are the boundary of femoral triangle. So you will see that this artery is crossing the femoral triangle from the base to apex and to contain down through adductor canal and the roof of the adductor canal is sartorius and some fascia then is going posteriorly through adductor opening adductor opening in adductor magnus muscle where it continues as popliteal artery in the back of the thigh popliteal artery and popliteal artery will contain down through the popliteal fossa crossing the popliteal fossa also from the upper part to the lower part then at the lower border of popliteus muscle popliteus muscle is going to split into two terminal branches the one which you go to the anterior aspect of the leg and the one which you continue in the posterior aspect of the leg you have anterior tibial the anterior tibial artery and posterior tibial artery okay then the anterior tibial artery is going anteriorly through the interosseous membrane and the continuing the anterior aspect of the leg where it reaches to the lower part of the leg and continue in the dorsum of the foot and dorsalis pedis artery dorsalis pedis artery okay so this is dorsalis pedis this is anterior tibial artery posteriorly you will see that the posterior tibial artery gave major branch is called peroneal then continue as posterior tibial artery this peroneal branch that's why sometimes this part this part we we'll call it tibiofibular tibiofibular trunk this part sometimes we call it tibiofibular trunk so if you read in your textbook tibiofibular trunk tibiofibular or peroneal trunk which is going to split into peroneal and or fibular and the posterior tibial okay the posterior tibial will continue in, in the sole of the foot so if we can see that here is the foot this is dorsum and this is plantar okay. you will see that the posterior tibial artery will split into lateral and the medial plantar arteries lateral and the medial plantar arteries lateral plantar artery medial plantar artery so it's very easy now to trace the blood supply of lower extremity from external iliac artery which you contain behind the inguinal ligament as femoral artery femoral artery cross 
femoral triangle from the base to the apex and then traveling through a ductal canal in this area and then cross from front to the back through a ductal opening where we continue as popliteal artery the popliteal artery traveling through popliteal fossa in the back of the thigh lower part of the thigh then continue for short distance until it reaches to the lower border of popliteus muscle dividing it into two terminal branches the tibiofibular trunk and the anterior tibia anterior tibial artery is going anteriorly to the front of the leg then to the dorsum of the foot where it continues as dorsalis pedis artery the tibiofibular trunk is going to divide into peroneal and posterior tibial the posterior tibial artery is going to split in the foot in, in the plantar surface or in the sole of the foot into medial and lateral plantar arteries okay from this diagram you can appreciate that the femoral artery will be responsible for front of the thigh okay and also back of the thigh front and the back how it reaches to the back through one major branch this major branch is called profunda or deep femoral artery deep femoral artery or sometimes we call it profunda femoris so this is the one which is going mainly to the back of the thigh popliteal artery to the lower part of the back of the thigh then anterior tibial to the front of the leg boroneal to the lateral side of the leg boroneal is going to supply the lateral side of the leg and the posterior tibial to the back of the leg the sole of the foot or plantar surface of the foot by medial and lateral plantar arteries dorsum of the foot by dorsalis pedis artery okay dorsalis pedis artery form a curve this curve extends from the medial to the lateral side of the dorsum and we call it arcuate artery because it makes like an arc okay one more notice which you need to understand that femoral artery is very superficial here in the femoral triangle that's why it's easy to be injured and also it's easy to access for angiogram like if you wanted to get image of coronal arteries for example you can do angiogram here injecting the dye first inserting the catheter this catheter go retrograde through the external iliac then common iliac then aorta until it reach to the coronary arteries then you can in inject a dye and you do coronary angiography to our angiogram to look at coronary artery also you can get blood sample from here especially to measure the gas level like the level of oxygen or carbon dioxide etc so femoral artery here has clinical significance it is superficial easy to be injured it is easy to be accessed for catheterization to do angiogram and also to get blood sample okay and the pulsation also to look at the parts thank you so this is ju just the introduction and i will go into detail in the next video thank you very much